be turned into a fucking smoothie myself. Um, yeah, she was great. What is this whole cake? Has anyone this? ever thought about how it's perfectly reasonable for Big Mom to have wanted to kill the Straw Hats? Like, imagine this. You are the Emperor of the Sea, Big Mom, and one of the islands under your territory is Fishman Island. And the only thing you ask from them in exchange for protection and whatever the fuck else they get from you being an Emperor of the Sea, the only thing you ask from them is that they give you some snacks, one of your favorite snacks. It's like a fish snack, whatever. It, you love it. You like it a whole lot. So you call them up and you're like, yo, yo. Where my snacks at? And this lunatic picks up the phone, gives you his full name, address, and social security number, and is like, <laughs> I ate your snacks. Now what? Like, you don't even know this person, and he's just off rip starting a fight with you. So you send some it's of true. your cronies to spend the block on his ass. But in the middle of that, you come in contact with some very useful information. One of the straw hats is actually a prince with the Germa kingdom, okay? Now, you see this as an opportunity to get what you want and also knock off every single member of Germa, all right? Now, keep in mind, Germa is an evil island. Like, they're all just vile, so this isn't even, like, a morally dubious thing. So you end up kidnapping Sanji, and you know that Luffy and the the other straw hats are okay to be fair her interest in the german kingdom was literally their cloning operations though they're literally like germans are basically like you know they're the closest you get to the nazi shit okay it's an entire kingdom specifically it's an entire kingdom that is not even a kingdom is a kingdom without a fucking actual uh land mass so it's an island uh, it's a kingdom on wheels and Germa 66 uh, has like the Power Ranger Nazi at the tippy top and the entire fucking uh, principle behind the Germa uh, island ethno state thing that they're fucking trying to create is that they want to dominate all the other places and they want to get uh, they, they want to win like they just want to they just want to take over they want to take back uh what's theirs they're so probably gonna come to whole cake island to get sanji back so that's a whole other plan that you have to set up for them you're waiting for them to show up so that you can take care of this lunatic that ate your snacks okay so they pull up just like you thought and they run into one of your best generals okay luffy the crackhead that challenged you to the fight ends up in a fight with your general for 11 hours and after that he ends up getting assaulted by his own crewmate and after that you send one of your armies to go beat him up and throw him in jail okay so this is going pretty according to plan so far all right now one of your sons is the jailer of the place that they're locked into it's luffy and nami and they're in jail and one of your sons is watching over them now you don't really know what happens after this point but the next you hear from your son is that he captured them and he executed them it kind of sounds like he's lying, but you you don't really know why he would lie. Like, that doesn't make any sense. Like, if he's lying, that actively puts everyone on your side in danger, so you just can't figure out why he would do that. But to be fair, you know, let's put ourselves in opera shoes, okay? Spoiler after you 12 just, minutes? What? like, a couple episodes watched your own mother indiscriminately murder one of her sons. Like, it's... And that was for no reason. So, you I mean, you fucked up. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's like, Big Mom is, is insane. Like, she just fucking... She just gets hungry and has hanger pangs and then will just murk her own fucking son like it's nobody's business. Okay? Bro, this whole review is spoilers. What? Yeah, it, it very clearly it is making... Uh, it's, it's joking about Big Mom. Uh, you allow this crackhead to escape prison and just run off into the night. Like, that could very feasibly have some consequences. But, you know, you think to yourself... Um, I can lie, it's fine, you know, like, sure, he escaped prison and he ran off, but he still has to fight a whole ass other army to get to anywhere on the island. The wedding's tomorrow, like, and even then, like, you know, Katakuri's gonna be there. Like, you think there's no way he's gonna make any problems. This starving, sleep-deprived crackhead, you think there's no way that he's gonna possibly fuck this up. So it's the next day, the day of the wedding, and this is around the time where Big Mom pretty much is removed from the narrative, and I'll explain that later, but now we gotta look at it from the perspective of Katakuri, okay? You are Charlotte Katakuri, the strongest member of the Big Mom Pirates besides Big the Mom herself. And the it goat. is your job to be security at this fucking wedding. It's your job to make sure that no fuck shit happens at this wedding. And you're pretty confident at that. You know, you've got a billion berry bounty. Your ridiculously strong devil fruit helps as well. And you've got future sights. So you can look into the future. You're also still on alert because you're Katakuri. You know, you're just always on guard. You know, sure, Luffy is so much poise. So much swag. Katakuri, for having 
the power of mochi mochi fruit, which is like kind of whack in the same exact way that Luffy's gum gum fruit is whack as fuck. Okay. Honestly, it's just like he he is the the quintessential sigma male okay is dead according to the most recent intel that you have but there could be other straw heads here there could be somebody here that wants to try and hurt me or my mother or anybody else you don't really know what you're looking for but you're on guard but either way the last thing you were expecting was this starving sleep deprived crackhead to jump out of the wedding cake and start whooping everybody's ass <laughs> like that is not you did not see that coming you're so startled that when you just randomly access your future site to make sure that everything's gonna go right when you see this happen when you see 100 starving sleep deprived crackheads jump out of the cake you are so fucking flabbergasted that it takes you extra long to process it you can't even do anything about it like there was time to do something about it but because you don't quite know what the fuck's going on you just you're frozen someone has to ask you yo cat you okay and you're like I, this is, something's about to happen i that's all I can say. Get ready. So 100 starving, sleep-deprived crackheads jump out of the cake and just start beating everybody up, like just assaulting everyone in sight. And you understand, like... It's not too whack due to it being Logia. Like, the mochi isn't like the wax fruit. It's straight up a Logia. So I wouldn't say it's like the gum fruit where initially you don't have many benefits. I guess. Okay, I won't watch after the 12th minute. All right, this is probably like a trap or a trick or something. Wait, way, it's like not a Logia? There can't really be 100 straw hat Luffy's like that's not a thing. We got to find the real one I think it's it's just like Luffy's is just like Luffy's fruit, isn't it? I, I felt like it was It feels a lot like Luffy's fruit Like it because I, I feel like it was supposed to be like a like a direct uh, like a direct comparison to to Luffy's, and when you when you hit him, and he like changes his body a little bit, it's in the same way that like when you hit Luffy because he's gum, it doesn't hit, it doesn't actually like penetrate him. You know what I mean? I think the reason why people think it's a it's a logia fruit is because like with Smoker, Smoker can like manipulate his body, and then. Uh, and, and that's the reason why people think that it's, uh, it's a Logia fruit, but I don't think it was a Logia fruit at all. I thought it, w it felt a lot like it was a direct, uh, comparison to, uh, Luffy's fruit. That's what it felt like. But yeah, he was dodging with future vision. He wasn't, he was dodging with his, uh, with his observation hockey. He wasn't actually... So someone yells out, anyway. show yourself, Mugiwara. And you're like, all right, that's a good start. Like other people are catching on to what we need to do, but there's no way he's going to, you know, announce himself in the crowd and ruin whatever plan that they've got. And to your surprise, this starving sleep deprived crackhead, the real starving sleep deprived crackhead, raises his hand, tells you his full name, address, and social security number, and says, now what? It's at this point you immediately understand this motherfucker is dangerous, all right? You, your eyes lock and you're like, Fuck everything else going on. It's me and you. I have to deal with you. I, it's got to be me because if, if I don't, I'm scared no one else is gonna. So you devote all of your attention to this lunatic that has now just announced himself to you. So you start fighting him a little bit. But in the middle of that, because you focused all your attention on Straw Hat Luffy, one of his crewmates manages to exploit your mother's one and only weakness. Now, this is a weakness that pretty much turns her into a rampaging monster, effectively pretty much ending her role in the plot and reducing her to a plot device for the entire arc. You don't know how they're gonna stop her, but the emphasis is on they. They have to deal with that bullshit. You look at your mother right in her eyes and go, yeah, that's, you know, you got a lot of sons and a lot of daughters. I, I'm taking care of the crackhead that broke into my sister's wedding. You guys have fun. Um, Sorry, this is what I came here to do. I'm wedding security. This guy's got to go. Sorry. So you chase the crackhead out of the wedding. All right, but somewhere along the line, it looks like he has kidnapped two of your sisters. Now, your sisters have two really powerful devil fruits. One of them lets you go into the mirror dimension, and the other one lets you alter memories. You don't know what this starving, sleep-deprived crackhead is going to do with those two devil fruits, but the potential alone scares the shit out of you. You mobilize even more people. Like, we got to stop them. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, the other part where I also teared up. 
was when putting uh at the end oh god i'm getting I, I i'm getting goosebumps thinking about it putting at the end when she walks up to sanji and takes the cigarette out of sanji's mouth and then kisses him and then takes his memories out and cuts them and wipes his memories so that sanji will then continue on his journey with the with the straw hats instead of like constantly worrying about her because Sanji is a massive simp. It's so sad. Oh my god. Oh, it's so it's so sad. The other part of the story that's also very sad is Pedro. Pedro is such a sick character. He's such a fucking cool character. Uh but I very quickly got angered when I very quickly got angered because Pedro uh you know, he 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 goes out like the the brave Mujahideen warrior that he is. But then at the end of the day, he allowed them to escape in that moment. But he still only took out Candyman's arm. You know what I mean? And it sucks that like... I mean, I know his time was... I know his, his time was up, right? I know, I know he was going to die. But the fact that he wasn't able to like... The fact that he wasn't able to to at least take him out completely, it made me so mad. It made me so mad that his sacrifice wasn't in vain. But that fucking piece of shit candy clown, he he got he got away. I don't I don't know what's gonna happen, but we gotta we gotta keep yeah, this leave. shit right now. So you chase him all the way to the ship. All right, you start beating up any of the crew members that you can, and you on you know that they can't beat you. So you think, all right, so it looks like this is finally over. Like let's end this. And then this lunatic grabs you, throws you into the mirror world, and then jumps in after you, and then he breaks the exit. He seals off the exit. So that so let's really put yourself in a category of shoes. Okay, you have chased this starving, sleep-deprived crackhead out of your sister's wedding after he just assaulted everyone there. And then after thinking that you have him cornered, he straight up says, I'm not locked in here with you. You're locked in here with me. And then gets ready to fight. You are terrified. You understand better than anyone in One Piece at this very moment just how dangerous Luffy is and that you need to take him seriously. He starts fighting. You start fighting. He starts trying to transform. You're like, no, fuck that. I'm not even going to give you time to do that shit. I know I can beat you, so I'm just going to fucking end this shit. You beat him up, and you use your devil fruit powers, your awakened devil fruit powers, to bury him in mochi. Now you say to yourself, no one's ever escaped my mochi. So this is a bit of a spoiler, I guess, but the awakened devil for powers, I suspect, is like what uh, Do Flamingo has, right? Like when Do Flamingo is able to manipulate everything around him and like turn everything around him into the strings. Like I feel like that's the final stage of your devil. Uh, that's the, that's the final stage of your devil fruit powers, right? Like where you can basically alter the environment around him according to your. Um, uh, alter the environment around you uh, according to your power. He's done. It's over. It's fine. We should be good. So you clock out for your lunch break. All right, you go and you start eating some donuts. Seven <laughs> minutes later, that crackhead has broken the door down and he starts trying to fight you again. You're like, how are you? Wh why? Why? Can you give me like 30 minutes, bro? Please. How the fuck? How are you even still here? And Luffy simply explains, oh, I, I just ate the mochi. So you have now fed this crackhead, giving him more energy to keep fighting you. So you keep beating his ass, all right? Until finally he runs out of hockey and he's like, oh, fuck, I need 10 minutes. And you're like, well, fuck that. I'm not going to give you 10 minutes to keep this up. For the record, that was my favorite part. That was my favorite part of that fight because it's so stupid that Luffy is always able to get away and like, breathe for 10 minutes so he can come back with hockey again and like that was the one time i was like no motherfucker what do you mean i'm not letting you get away with this shit what, what the fuck what do you got plot armor which he do she still does end up getting away with it but it's still like at least there's an attempt there so that's good 
You know? I'm ending this. So you start chasing him around the mirror dimension until he runs into your sister, which controls the entrance and exit of the mirror dimension. You think, oh no, this is horrible. He takes her hostage and he flees. You go, fuck. But low key, you're kind of relieved. You know, you're 48 years old. You can't be fighting for 11 hours. Okay, that's the other part that's like crazy. I didn't know Katakuri was 48. Hours like that, you know? The sun is going down. So that means you've been chasing this crackhead around the island like all day. So you get your breath and you start looking for a way out. And then 10 minutes later, guess who you see? But that lunatic, that crazy ass crackhead coming back to run the ones with you. You almost shed a tear, you're so tired. Yeah, it's the third secret type, by the way. Brulee is the third secret type of woman that Oda likes to draw. Okay. The the two types of women that Oda likes to draw are like impossibly sexy and impossibly ugly and nothing in between. Or the secret third type of woman that Oda will draw is literally impossibly sexy body and then like the impossibly ugly face built on top of the impossibly sexy body. And Brulee and that doctor uh also fits that bill. It's just so funny. You are so old and so tired. So you keep beating him up until something starts happening. All right. He starts closing his eyes as if he's trying to anticipate how and when you're throwing hands. You're like, what are you trying to be a Jedi? Knock it off. Oh, what is this? What is Charlotte Amande? Impossibly sexy. That's so dumb. What a question. Yeah, no. Charlotte Amande is on the impossibly sexy side. Yeah, she's the throat goat, dude. What are you talking about? Uh, next question. Yeah, look at that neck. Um, no, I think I I personally think that Big Mom Pirates officers, out of all the Big Mom Pirates officers, like Charlotte Smoothie is literally insane. Like, she didn't have to go that hard. Okay? Like, Oda did not need to draw her in the way that he did, but he chose to do it anyway, and it fucked me up. Okay? There you go. This is, once again, the classic sexy body, but then also, what the fuck's going on there? Charlotte Smoothie is out of control. Okay. Charlotte Smoothie is out of this world. She's out of control. I want her to turn me into a fucking smoothie with her legs. She also looks like... She also basically looks like she's from a different anime the entire time. Which I thought was really funny. Like when she has that hat. With like the one. Uh, like you can only see the one eye. She literally just looks like she's from a different anime. And she was just like propped in there. She looks like she does not fit in one piece. Okay. I don't know how else to describe it. There's a lot of like Jojo coded characters in this universe. But. What? Trisha Paytas did a segment about you today. So random. They think your dad's a billionaire and you're flying private jets, but also you are Oscar. Just knows you're hot. I don't think they know you're friends with Ethan. What? Trisha Paytas did a segment about me and said my dad's a billionaire and I fly in private jets. The one time I flew in a private jet was with Trisha Paytas and it was a David Dobrik private jet. Yeah, she was there. Charlotte. Charlotte Smoothie's role is so shit in the story. Private your Twitter, a fucking storm is coming. Wait, what? <laughs> 
He said the private jet was mine. That's awesome. I don't think any single person would believe that, right? Right? They're trying to turn the gaze against you? Yeah. Anyway, all right, let's continue. So um, the other thing I wanted to say about Whole Cake Island before we get to Reverie, which is obviously the last part um, of the saga that I want to talk about, was um, the... the oh, fuck, what was I going to say? Because Reverie was insane. Reverie was so much lore, lore dumping. But, um, what the fuck was I going to say? God damn it. Uh, I feel like, I feel like smoothie was underutilized for sure. She could have had a, a bigger role. I think, uh, my queen. Um, but, uh, you know, that's it, it's that's fine. It's neither here oh, nor well, there. Let's finish this. But he starts dodging your hands. You're like, are you fucking kidding? He like he's there's no way he's turning this fight into a training arc. And you know, that's not fair. Like at that moment, you literally think to yourself, that's not fair. How it's supposed to go. If I'm way stronger than the protagonist, then the protagonist I literally saw that Trisha TikTok today. Interesting. No idea. You know who else was on Big Zerto? Another <laughs> who? straight, straight man. man. Hassan was on Hassan. he's straight right i have no idea either who what, what who are we talking about um what's his last name piker was... moses knows him. oh oh <laughs> the, oh yes yes I young like, turks and he's twitch streamer i'm like moses is <laughs> yes oh yeah yeah i don't care about this um you guys are real perverts dude drama perverts Uh, what was I going to say? There was another thing I wanted to talk about, but I'm forgetting shit. Uh, Colby revealed during Reverie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's Reverie. Hold on. I'm going to get to Reverie in a second. Uh, Whole Cake Island. Whole Cake Island. There was a couple other points that I wanted to address in Whole Cake Island that I'm not remembering right now. Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? Uh, the Mink Secret Power is cool. Oh, the musicals. So I thought like, I mean, obviously like Whole Cake Island is, is uh, Oda trying to do, um, I felt like uh, Oda trying to do like a, like a Wizard of Oz, like Disney style musical thing. Alice in Wonderland, Wizard of Oz, Disney style musical, which I thought was like kind of weird. I didn't really like the, um, I didn't personally like, uh, the, the musical side of it that much. I'm not like a big fan of musical anyway. Subbed it's creepy. Yeah. It wasn't the best. I guess the last song is pretty good, but other than that, wasn't a super big fan, but let's get to. Let's get to the motherfucking incredible arc. Okay. You forgot about Jimbe and Morgans? No, I didn't forget about Jimbe. I mentioned it. Um, low key music has always been important to One Piece, though. Okay, I'm going to say something that's controversial. I feel like there's like five, one. Oh, Morgans is the news guy. Yeah, he's great. I, I forgot to mention that. Yeah. I thought Morgan's was sick. Fake news. Fake news, Morgan's. Also, Morgan's working with fucking Cypherpole CIA lady. Come on, dog. Fake news. Come on, man. Morgan's is literally working with the CIA where they like hang out a little bit. Working alongside the CIA Cypherpole. Come on, dude. Come on, brother.
Anyway. Big news media mogul news making fake news. Yeah. Also, bird and birds ain't real. All right. Anyway, not political though. One Piece is not political. Oh, uh, the thing I was going to say about One Piece music is they're controversial, but like there's five songs, dude. There's literally like only five different songs for like 1,000 million episodes. We need more songs. They're all bangers. Fine. But like, dude, come on, dude. The first time I heard a new song was the entry into Wano. With the sitar. Holy shit. Up until then, it's literally fucking five songs. And I'm being nice when I say five songs. There's In reality, there's three songs. And then sometimes they play two additional bangers. And that's it. It's so crazy that this, ep this fucking show... This goddamn show has literally had five whole songs for 1,000 episodes. Sure, they're great. Like, obviously, my favorite is the dun, 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 like the epic one that I play all the time. This is like the trap version, obviously. This is the clapped out version, but... Like, it's crazy to me. Dog, the One Piece OST is like three and a half hours long. Three and a half hours? Really? I don't think so. Bump, bump, bump. Bump, 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 bump. Bump, bump, bump. Bump, bump. Bump, bump, bump. Bump, 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 bump. To be fair, Toy still uses sound effects that were used in the original in 1989 Dragon Ball and One Piece. They are a shitty ass animation studio. Yeah. It's just like. <laughs> and then this. Yeah, I mean, this is the one. Bump, bump, bump. Bump, 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 bump. It's always this, bro. This is always the song that's playing. Music of One Piece, more than 100, wait, what? More than 100 musical CDs have been created in the media franchise? I don't believe it. I don't fucking believe it. I don't believe that there is, first of all, half of these are probably from movies. None of them are featured in the fucking TV show. And the other half are all basically like the same song over and over again. Okay. Yeah, this is this is another goaded one. Yeah, there's a lot of one-offs, but the re but the ones they play all the time are the same fucking songs, dude. All the song variety is pre-time skip. Yeah. It's nuts. Oh, and it, this probably counts the opening songs too. The intro songs don't count. I'm talking about the soundtrack. Okay. It's almost always the same theme with like some variety on the same theme. It literally feels like there's five songs. There's three songs and then like two extra songs that are also repeated sometimes. That's it. I will stand on this. I feel like there needs to be more. There needs to be more songs. Like, come on, dude. It's 1,000 episodes. Or how big One Piece is? I don't see One Piece orche orchestra events like Nier or Final Fantasy. Yeah. Yeah, and then this. Who could forget this? There are so many One Piece or Orchestra events. Anyway, what is this? Oh, this was a good one too. 
I think. I think we're. Anyway. The very, very, very strongest. So. Is that from a movie, actually? I don't know. Anyway, uh. Anyway, listen, listen, listen. All I'm saying is more songs is a necessary thing for One Piece, okay? It'd be it'd be nicer if there was more than fucking five songs. Agnes has to get like a training arc, a magic weapon, go Super Saiyan, something. All right, Luffy straight up just said, I bet he'll get tired of beating my ass before I get tired of getting my ass beat. And he was right. You are so tired. You have hit him so many times. Every hit connects and he goes down every time, but he keeps getting up. It's almost inspiring. Like every time he gets back up, you hear Eye of the Tiger and it kind of pumps you up a little bit. But you know, no matter how much respect Terrible take, We Are is the only song One Piece needs just on loop like it is in my house. Yes, We Are is probably the greatest anime intro song of all time. I do agree with that. For sure. Not the strongest opening, but it's a classic. It's permanently stuck in my in my mind. Um So Bro, read the manga when you catch up, please. <sighs> anyway, I don't want to watch the rest of this because you said that he has spoilers in here. 